Hey, it's Mr. S here, and I'm here to talk to you guys about a very important subject that a lot of parents have questions about, math. Now, the big question about math that I notice a lot is how to teach math effectively. I know a lot of parents believe that just because a child can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 or more means they know math. And yes, of course, knowing the sequence of numbers is important. It's, it's the first step in understanding math. However, the numbers need to be associated with something as well. So just because a child can say 7 doesn't quite mean they know what 7 means. So what we have to do is incorporate a, a way and a method for children to advance in their math skills without being too confused about what the subject's really about. So one thing that I notice a lot of people do that is kind of a mistake and a little bit backwards is when they'll put out, let's say I'm going to put out 10 objects and I'm going to say, I'm going to ask the children, all right, children, how many objects do we have? Now the instinct for the children is to count them one by one. So they'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they're going to go from one to ten. However, if you ask them to count it again, say, how many did I have? They're going to say this way. They're like, oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So instead of just remembering that the answer is ten, they're going to recount it because they don't remember what the answer is. What we have to teach children is to just remember what the number is important. When you count things, the most important number is the last one because that's how much is in that pile. So when you count five apples, you don't care if there's three apples in the five apple pile. You care there's five apples because at the end, that's the sum of all the totals. So when you add up one and you add up the second one, you add up the third one, so you keep one, 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 it equals the total, which is five. Now I'm going to show you guys a great way to teach basic math and arithmetic while keeping it simple because... Of course, we don't want to confuse children or overstimulate them so they don't understand what the learning process is. So sometimes we have to step back and really simplify it. And I'm going to show you guys in, in an activity that's really easy. You can probably find the materials at home and something that we do in the classroom to help children learn. And it's going to help you help the children learn. And then we can really look deep in this single activity that's really open-ended and move forward with it. And you guys can use this at home or on the go. You could bring it with you. You could even create some kind of felt board that you can pack and roll up and you can actually take this activity on you on the go, wherever you go and just, hey, let's do some quick math real quick and boom, boom, boom. So, all right, I'm gonna show you guys right now. Here we go. Okay, so here we are with a simple math activity. So as I was saying before, most people, um, even, the, even educators, teachers, We'll set up a problem like this, and the last children to count it out. So most children would say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now when asked again, they'll say, well, let me count it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ideally, we want to just say, how many did we have again? And they want the child to answer. We want them to remember their answer. So what we got to do... It's two things. Number one, we gotta simplify a problem. Okay, I'm gonna make it much simpler than that. So let's start with the basics here. So basics would be so first test your child. See how much they can do. So the first one would be, how many do you see? I see one. How about now? Two. Three. Okay, now take them away. How many did we have? That forces them to say, well, I remember the last number we said was three, so that must be the most important. And if they're not at that level, we'll go back to the basics. Just go, okay, well, let's go back to the basics here. How many do I have? One. If I take it away, how many do I have? Same. It should be one again. We want to work on We want to make sure children are aware of that. So let's do it. How many do we have now? And then you cover it up and you take it away. How many did we have? We had two. So we want to make sure that children are remembering which number in the counting is important. We don't want them to say, oh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because that doesn't really mean anything. We want them to remember what number is associated with the number of objects presented to them. Now, what this will do is later on, we'll be able to do something like this. So we'll say, let's count them out. 1, 2, 
three. And I'll say, okay, close your eyes. And I'll do something like this. And I'll say, how many did I take away? So now the child has to remember what number did they have initially. Okay, I had three. And now I only have, I only have one. So that means I'm missing, and then they'll think about it. I'm missing two. Oh, yeah, we took away two. One plus two is three. So what's going on is that's kind of like algebra. So in, when we say in early child education, oh yes, we could teach child algebra. In a sense, we can. It's just there's no letters associated with it. It's just the, the math behind it, which is what you're doing. So if I have one blank equals three, I have to do a little bit of algebra. Okay, so I start out with three, and I take away one. So that says I need two. So in a sense, we are teaching children how to do algebra even at a young age. It's just we haven't introduced the letters or the way we actually write it out. But it's still, in a sense, a type of algebra, which requires them to guess, not even guess, they need to know what number is required to create another number after they already have a total. So here we have a total. And here we have given them a new problem. So the first problem was, how many do I have? Okay, well, I have three. And the second problem is, well, how many did I take away? Well, I know I had three, and I only have one, so that's two variables done. What's the last one that I need to know? Well, I need to know how many I took away, which is two. Another thing that's really important to do with children is, children. so children have a very hard time counting like this. I'm sure how adults count, so this is how we kind of count. So if I just do this and this. And... So the first thing a, a, an adult will see is 3 and 2. 3, 2, 5, right away. A child will have a very difficult time looking at something like this because it's grouped up. A child can count much more effectively if things are laid out straight lines. Much easier for them to comprehend that. So... Before we start mixing things up and, and, and placing everything in odd places, really make sure the child understands how to subsidize, which is what we as adults do. This is called subsidizing. When we're able to look at a group here and say, okay, two, two, one, five, five. You know, and it, or maybe even two, 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 or even two, four. Adults see patterns. Children don't quite see patterns. And that's okay because adults have a very hard time counting in straight lines. If I just put a huge straight line, it takes a lot longer for adults to count it. And children are so good at counting the straight lines. So we want to make sure that they are really good at counting the straight lines. First, we want to we want to make sure this is good before we move on to any kind of strange patterning like that. Another thing that's important to note is why we use circles first. So circles are very neutral. So sometimes children may get distracted when using other shapes or objects. They, they don't focus on the math. They focus on, well, if this was a square, what if the square was tilted? Or if the triangle wasn't facing the same way the other ones? So the great part about the circles is it's just super plain and simple. It's, no matter what angle they do, they're pretty much round. And obviously, they're not perfect. We're not perfect. But this is something you can do at home. You don't need anything extra. You don't need to go buy anything. You know, if you want to later on, you may add a number on the on the bottom and just remember to keep them in order. And then when you flip them over, you say one. That's one, and associate the number with what you know how many you're counting. But that's a, that's a whole other you know level of including uh, different aspects of like symbols with counting. So for now, simple is better. No need to go any further than that. And this is what I call dot counting or whatever you want to call it. it doesn't cost like I said it doesn't cost money simple stuff and it's something that's going to help your child learn how to count much more effectively and seriously you can make a million of these dots another thing I would recommend is getting a piece of felt and maybe even getting just white felt with black felt and cutting out the black circles so that you can take it on the go that way you can stick the felt on there you know, if you really need to, you can always add Velcro to felt, and it makes it stick ten times better. But I would say that just felt on felt is fine, too. It's just a simple activity to take home and do with your kids. All right, everybody. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you next time.